This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Thursday, the 28th day of March in the year 2024. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and here is what we're tracking tonight. The United Nations Human Rights Committee today issued a call for the government of Guyana to expand its efforts to adopt and implement efficient and prompt measures to promote good governance and combat corruption and impunity at all levels of the government. In its report following the Guyana Periodic Review last week, the UN Human Rights Committee today said, while it has noted the adoption of several laws and regulations by the country to combat corruption, it remains concerned that the institutional framework to combat corruption is not yet sufficiently strong and effective in practice to adequately prevent or prosecute corruption, including in the police force and of high-level public officials. The UN Committee also expressed its concern about reports that the Commissioner of Information does not address all requests from the public and the Protected Disclosures and Witness Protection Act is not yet being enforced. The UN Human Rights Committee said it wants to see Guyana adopt concrete measures to address the root causes of corruption as a matter of priority and to ensure that all corruption cases, including cases of those involved in high-level corruption and corruption in the police force are independently and impartially investigated and prosecuted and that perpetrators if convicted are sanctioned with penalties commensurate with the seriousness of the offense and that victims receive full reparation. In its report, the UN Human Rights Body also urged the implementation of measures necessary to ensure in practice the independence, effectiveness, transparency and accountability of all anti-corruption bodies, including the Auditor's General Office, the Commissioner of Information, the Integrity Commission and the Public Procurement Commission. The committee has also issued a call on the government to ensure that the right of access to information held by the Commissioner of Information can be effectively exercised in practice. And the government should also effectively protect whistleblowers and witnesses and bring the Protected Disclosure and Witness Protection Act into force. Turning its attention to the oil and gas sector, the UN Human Rights Body said it is concerned about reports of corruption, lack of transparency and accountability in the management of natural resources, particularly in the oil and gas sector. It expressed worry about the reports of corruption by public officials in the oil and gas sector and the lack of information on the measures taken to investigate those allegations. According to the UN Human Rights Committee, the government of Guyana should take all appropriate measures to ensure that the management of its natural resources is not subject to corruption, adding that the administration should also ensure that permits granted for the exploitation of natural resources and license to exploit oil fields undergo adequate prior environmental and societal impact assessments carried out in a systematic and transparent manner with a meaningful participation of all affected communities. The UN body said again a government should ensure prompt, thorough, independent and impartial investigations into reports of corruption in awarding public contracts and prosecute cases. Governance Minister Gail Teixeira appeared before the UN Human Rights Body last week and was peppered with a number of questions regarding corruption in Guyana, the oil and gas sector, the environment, the justice system, child labor and other related matters. The government has said the UN committee should do more investigations of the complaints it receives before pronouncing on those complaints. More news coming up in just a moment. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. 
holiday spending, put a dent in your cash. Top up your pockets in the cash splash promotion. Win over five million dollars, including over one million in our weekly draws. Just purchase any Buster Turbo. Fruta, cool kids are viva. Look for the eight digit code starting with 786. Then visit Facebook or IG at Busta Guyana or Turbo underscore Caribbean for more details. In our search for sophistication and grace, the Super Stylistics team invites you to be part of something extraordinary. Mothers and daughters who possess aura and presence that transcend through time. Step forward and become part of the Mother and Daughter Pageant 2024. Join our legacy as we redefine elegance for generations to come. The search for the epitome of timeless love begins now. Call 226-2825 or 626-0460 to secure your spot in the Mother and Daughter Pageant 2024. Guinness Street Ballers. It's down to the final eight this Saturday. It's the Guinness Greatest of Districts and Sunday for the semi-finals and finals at the National Park. Will gold is money make history with a third championship or is there an upset in the making? Come and support your community and show that you're made of more. Consumers can win free Guinness and cool premiums with the purchase of every six bottles of Guinness. Admission free. Guinness made of more. Please drink responsibly 18 years and over. The Ghana police forces seeking to gather information tonight under detention and questioning of head of the major crimes unit of the police force superintendent Mitchell Caesar recently by U.S. law enforcement agents. There are reports that Caesar, who was part of a Ghana police force contingent that participated in a training program in India, was detained and questioned by U.S. authorities during his stopover in the U.S. on his way to India and again on his return to the U.S. from India. While the Ghana police forces offered no information on the issue, Vice President Barra Jagdio today said the matter is currently engaging the attention of the leadership of the Ghana police force. The Vice President said he has been informed that a senior officer has since submitted a report to his superiors in the Ghana police force. The report from what we gather, from what I gather, a report was made to the superior officer or the senior officer of that policeman. So that will engage the leadership of the police force um, and that's where the matter will be dealt with. Vice President Jack Deo said he is unclear as to what could have led to the detention of the senior police officer by the U.S. law enforcement agents. He said the U.S. is not likely to divulge information on the arrest or the line of questions posed to the police officer. The United States of America will not tell us what their questions are, wh why they question people, because they, that's immigration matter. They don't, as a matter of policy, they don't release why visas are withdrawn or, or denied. So a lot of people have had visas withdrawn or denied, but they will not share that information that is um, in they keep that information to themselves. If there is any criminality on the part of anyone in government, then once the information is shared with us formally by the US government, there'll be action taken against people. But we can't go on the basis of allegations and all of that. However, Mr. Jag, you assured that should the government be provided with verifiable information by the U.S. that a government official or police officer may be involved in some sort of criminal activity, such allegations will be investigated. Last April, the then Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Home Affairs, Mate Son Jr. Thomas, was arrested and interrogated for hours at a U.S. airport while she was heading to China. Her U.S. visa was later revoked while she was in China, forcing her to find another route back home to Guyana. She has since been transferred from the Ministry of Home Affairs and is now the Permanent Secretary of the Labour Ministry. President Irfan Ali has made it clear that Guyana will call on its allies for military support should Venezuela overstep its boundary and attempt to invade Guyana's Essequibo region.
Appearing on the BBC program Hard Talk, President Ali said while Ghana's first line of defense is diplomacy, the country will call on its allies should there be any attempt by Venezuela to invade Ghana's borders. We have made it very clear that if there is any breach in our territorial space, if there is any action by anyone to destabilize our country and to invade in any way, shape or form, that we will call upon every force and every friend to help us and to work with us to pr protect our territorial integrity. Just recently, the Venezuelan National Assembly, in keeping with the outcome of a December 3rd referendum, adopted a legislation declaring the Escobar region to be part of Venezuela. However, the law represents a clear breach of provisional measures handed down by the International Court of Justice, which restrains Venezuela from taking any action to alter the current status quo. The Essequibo region makes up more than two-thirds of Ghana's territory. Notwithstanding its commitment to maintaining the peace, as declared in the Argyle Declaration, satellite images captured back in January also showed that there was a continued buildup of military assets close to the border with Guyana. President Ali said he is cognizant of the reality on the ground and is taking appropriate measures. We recognize that we are dealing with a neighbor that is aggressive, that has made certain threats, and we are investing in our military, we are investing in the technology of our military, we are investing in infrastructure. But more than that, we have aligned ourselves with countries and a region that is on the side of Guyana. Guyana has received the support of the Caribbean community CARICOM, the United Kingdom, the US and Canada, and among other countries. President Ali was keen in noting that the border controversy remains properly before the International Court of Justice. Venezuela continues to not acknowledge the court's jurisdiction to hear the matter, but it continues to send its representatives every time there is a court hearing. In the world of politics and health, opposition leader Obi Norton today registered his dissatisfaction over that move by the government to support the importation of 500 nurses from Bangladesh to supplement the local health sector. At the press conference, Mr. Norton said the move is a slap in the face of local nurses who have been working for years with both low wages and poor working conditions. According to the opposition leader, before any such move is taken, the government needs to first address the challenges facing local nurses and fill the gaps in the system. Therefore, call for a halt to this process. The government should be doing the following. One, ensure that the government and the trade unions agree to a multi-year pay package for health workers, teachers and other public servants through collective bargaining. Two, table a policy paper on immigration and migration in the National Assembly for scrutiny, discussion and a consensual approach to these issues. The opposition leader accused the government of forcing persons out of the public sector, noting that any move by the government to bring in foreign workers and provide better pay packages and working conditions to them should be seen as disrespectful. The government clearly is creating the conditions for health workers and public servants to migrate so that they can replace them with foreigners who they are likely to exercise control over. The government needs to desist from this destructive strategy and create conditions conducive to Guyanese wanting to be health workers and public servants and remain in Guyana. He also believes the decision to grant clearance for the recruitment of the foreign nurses was calculated by the government. The use of work contracts to recruit public servants from other countries is a devious stratagem by the PPP to suppress wages and benefits for local workers as well. Under the PPP, this stratagem foreign recruitment of workers will likely spread to the education system and the wider public service. Earlier this week, the government confirmed that it had granted approval to a private company to recruit 500 healthcare workers from Bangladesh to fill local gaps. Guinness Street Balls. It's down to the final eight this Saturday. It's the Guinness Greatest of Districts and Sunday for the semi-finals and finals at the National Park. Will gold is money make history with a third championship or is there an upset in the making? Come and support your community and show that you're made of more. Consumers can win free Guinness and cool premiums with the purchase of every six bottles of Guinness. Admission free. Guinness made of more. Please drink responsibly 18 years and over.
Mobile One is more than oil. It's many oils. It transforms at the molecular level. When cold, it's thicker than honey. When hot, it's thinner than water. Mobile One adapts and readapts to last longer. 16,000 kilometers between oil changes. That's your engine evolved. Saul Gann is the authorized distributor of mobile lubricants. At the most critical life-changing moments, the National Insurance Scheme is here to ensure that your needs are covered. Access reimbursement for medical expenses for various aspects of your medical care. We know that eye care is of utmost importance. Receive assistance with our spectacle care voucher. Visiting the dentist? Dental care is also covered under our sickness benefit services. Offset the funeral expenses of a loved one with costs covered by our funeral benefits. National Insurance Scheme. We're there every step of the way. Look at the breathtaking beauty of the Essequibo, from its pristine rivers to its abundant resources. It's a treasure that belongs to Guyana, and we ask Venezuela to respect the rule of international law. Our commitment to this land is not just about ownership. It's about preserving its beauty and resources for our people and future generations. The controversy between Guyana and Venezuela was settled internationally as full, perfect and final in 1899. Essequibo belongs to Guyana. Well, with a plan to regroup, refocus, and rebuild the People's National Congress reform, party executive member and senior counsel Roy Silford today launched his campaign for the leadership of the PNC reform. The party is gearing up for its biennial delegates congress, which is expected to be held no later than the 31st of August. According to Mr. Ford, he's open for nomination for the top party spot. At his campaign launch this morning, he told reporters that he has the support and the experience to lead the party along with its coalition partners to victory come next elections. I believe that I have done the work that is required. I have traveled throughout the length and breadth of Guyana. I've interfaced with our supporters and I believe that they have expressed their interest and confidence in seeing me as the leader of the party. On the question of experience, I believe that I bring to bear sufficient and adequate experience which will be able to impact positively on moving the party forward. I'm aware that the leader said that he's experienced and the party would not want to be placed into the hands of an inexperienced person. I certainly agree with him, but I believe that my track record in and out of politics demonstrates sufficient experience. Ford believes that in order to defeat the PP Civic at the next elections, the People's National Congress reform must take an approach that not only holds the governing party accountable, but also offers hope to the hearts and the minds of citizens. He said in order to achieve that, the party which remains the largest partner in the coalition must regroup, refocus and rebuild. Regrouping is a crucial aspect of our party's political endeavor, not just as a political strategy, but as a testament to our collective strength and resilience as a party. The PNC are, has a history, his, rich history and a diverse array of perspectives that make us strong. It is therefore critical that we come together to regroup, realign our efforts 
in pursuit of our shared values and goals for the betterment of the people. Unity within our party should not just be a mere aspiration, but must be seen as a fundamental necessity for the PNCR to achieve meaningful progress and enact positive change, not for ourselves, but for the people of the nation that we serve. In regrouping, Mr. Ford said, should he win the leadership of the party, there will be room for all, including the current leader. Refocusing for us means recommitting ourselves to the core values and principles that bind and keep us together. It means putting one's personal agenda and ego aside for the greater good of the party and the people of the nation. It means constantly engaging in constructive dialogue, actively listening to diverse perspectives, and always finding common ground to move forward. Refocusing cannot occur in isolation, hence why regrouping is necessary. And the PNC reform executive also said once the party has been regrouped, it will be important for it to refocus, admitting that the People's National Congress reform, like any other political party, experiences various challenges both internally and externally. And it is therefore important for it to refocus its energies and realign its priorities. Mr. Norton is a senior and distinguished member of the party under any leader Apart from myself, if I win, any other leader would be foolish to seek to exclude Mr. Norton from the wealth that he brings to the part. Ford said there is also a need for greater attention to be paid to the issues confronting Guyanese, such as the high cost of living, the need for better health care, education, and economic opportunities for all, as well as a clean voters list. A number of executive members of the PNC reform attended Ford's campaign launch, including members of Parliament Natasha St. Louis, Maureen Philadelphia, and Annette Ferguson, along with Region 4 Chairman Daniel Siram and former Georgetown Mayor Ubraj Narain. Leader of the People's National Congress Reform, Aubrey Norton, today welcomed the challenge by opposition member of parliament, Roysdale Ford, for the position of party leader. But not before questioning whether Ford has what it takes to be the leader of the People's National Congress Reform. While not naming Ford, the PNC reform leader said anyone wanting the party leadership should ensure they have nothing in hiding that can be used against them by other parties. This party is a democratic party. Anyone can run for leadership of the party. But this party is also a politically sensible party. A lot of party members speak to me, and there are certain things they are looking for in the leader at this stage. One of them is the PPP must have nothing on you so that they can use it to, your, to their advantage. You must not be involved in any oil scam, or there's any document left in the government uh, drawers that can be used to control you. Norton believes he remains the right man for the job and says he has not been involved in any form of corruption. He said he can continue to stand up to the PPP. There are some people who don't have knowledge and purporting to be leaders in this party running around speaking about the presidential primaries. It's a true manifestation that they have not yet arrived at the point where they have the knowledge of the party to lead this party. Norton is of the view that Mr. Ford's posture is tantamount to a scheme by the governing party. He accused former General Secretary and longtime member of the PNC reform, Amna Ali, of pushing the Ford candidacy. Meanwhile, sitting right next to Norton at today's press conference was opposition member of parliament, Ganesh Mahipal. And he said he's also considering running for the position of party leader. He said once nominated, he will give serious consideration to the wishes of the membership of the party to contest. A female sergeant of the Ghana Defense Force lost her life last evening after she was hit down along with two other soldiers by a truck along the Suzdike Linden Highway just outside the Splashman's Resort. The Ghana Defense Force has confirmed the death of Sergeant Deslin Nicholson. In a statement last evening, the GDF stated that Sergeant Nicholson was among other soldiers taking part in the force's annual 30-kilometer walk when a truck bearing registration number GAC 6915 struck her and two other soldiers down as they walked along the highway. The incident occurred just around 9 p.m. 
The three injured soldiers were rushed to the Diamond Hospital by a GDF ambulance. It was there the doctors pronounced the female sergeant dead and admitted the two other soldiers with multiple injuries. The driver of the truck said the soldiers were dressed in dark colored clothing in an unlit section of the roadway and were walking three abreast. He also said they were not wearing any reflective material. The public relations officer in the GDF, Hippolyta Ferguson, said a board of inquiry will be conducted into the incident. The first woman to become Chief Justice and Chancellor of the Judiciary in Guyana and the first woman judge under the Caribbean Court of Justice, Desiree Bernard, has died. She passed away earlier today, according to relatives. The retired judge recently celebrated her 85th birthday. She has been living in Trinidad and Tobago in recent years. Last year, she was presented with an honorary doctorate of letters degree from the University of Guyana. Justice Bernard was considered a trailblazer in the legal field locally and across the Caribbean. Offering condolences, President Irfan Ali said she has left an indelible mark on the legal landscape and it is one that all Guyanese should take pride in. He said Justice Bernard was a trailblazer for women in the field of law and her stellar legal career, personal integrity and her outstanding legacy will continue to inspire all who seek to serve within the legal system. Director of Public Prosecutions, Senior Counsel Shalimar Ali Hack, in a statement said, Justice Bernard set a high standard for all judges who aspire to emulate her, especially female judges. The DPP also said that Justice Bernard always commented at the admission of a young female lawyer to the bar that more women are now being admitted, but they must not be just numbers. They must strive to excel at the bar. This was her charge to young female lawyers on their admission, the DPP said. The Chief Justice of Belize, Guyanese Justice Louise Blendman, in a statement remembered Justice Bernard as a female trailblazer as a lawyer and judge, both in Guyana and the wider Caribbean. Chief Justice Blendman said Justice Bernard's contributions to the region's jurisprudence was recently quite fittingly recognized by the Caribbean Court of Justice Academy for Law, which honored her as a pioneering woman jurist. Justice Desiree Bernard, who is originally from Plaisance, started her legal career in 1964 and retired from the Caribbean Court of Justice in 2014. In our search for sophistication and grace, the Super Stylistics team invites you to be part of something extraordinary. Mothers and daughters who possess aura and presence that transcend through time. Step forward and become part of the Mother and Daughter Pageant 2024. Join our legacy as we redefine elegance for generations to come. The search for the epitome of timeless love begins now. Call 226-2825 or 626-0460 to secure your spot in the Mother and Daughter Pageant 2024. Guyana's economy is rapidly transforming, and we're all part of it. Guy Oil is at the forefront of this development by providing reliable and efficient energy and supporting community development from the very core. 100% of Guy Oil's profit goes back to building schools, roads, and other important infrastructure that connects our cities and towns, providing fuel to domestic, marine, industrial, and aerial transportation. Guy Oil has now repositioned itself as a market leader in the petroleum industry, building a better future for all of us. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Holiday spending put a dent in your cash. Top up your pockets in the cash splash promotion. Win over $5 million, including over $1 million in our weekly draws. Just purchase any Buster, Turbo, Fruta, Cool Kids, or Viva. Look for the eight-digit code starting with 786. 
then visit Facebook or IG at Busta Guyana or Turbo underscore Caribbean for more details. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Swetlana Marshall in the region. Colombia ordered the expulsion of Argentine diplomats from their embassy, Colombia's foreign ministry said on Wednesday, citing denigrating comments by Argentine President Javier Malay about Colombian President Gustavo Petro. According to Reuters, in a recent interview with CNN, Malay called Petro a terrorist, murderer, and communist. In a statement, Colombia's foreign ministry said the Argentine president's comments have deteriorated the trust of their nation, in addition to offending the dignity of President Petro, who was democratically elected. In January, Colombia recalled its ambassador to Argentina after a similar comments from Malay. Petro is a former member of the long demobilized M19 guerrilla movement. Dengue cases in the Americas spike in the first three months of this year, by three times the number of infections reported in the same period last year, the Pan-American Health Organization said on Thursday. Brazil, Argentina and Paraguay are the countries most affected by dengue, in what PAHO officials described at a press conference as probably the worst season to date observed in the Americas for the often deadly mosquito-borne viral illness. PAHO, part of the United Nations organization, has confirmed some 3.5 million cases of dengue and more than 1,000 deaths this year through March across the Americas, extending from Canada to the southern tip of Chile, including the Caribbean. Around 4 billion people, or half the world's population, live in areas with a risk of contracting dengue, according to data from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And finally tonight, international news. Sam Bankman-Fried, also known as SBF, has been sentenced to 25 years in prison for stealing billions of dollars from customers of his cryptocurrency exchange FDX, according to the BBC. After a two-hour hearing, the judge, Louis Kaplan, said Bankman-Fried knew what he was doing was criminal and regretted making a bad bet about the likelihood of being caught. Bankman Fry told the court that he made a lot of mistakes, but maintained FTX had the ability to repay customers when it imploded. Prosecutors say Bankman Fry took more than $10 billion from unsuspecting customers in one of the biggest financial frauds in the U.S. history. FTX was valued at $32 billion before it went bankrupt in 2022, and SBF crafted a public image that drew in celebrities, politicians, and business titans. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.